Okay, so the first thing we're going to do for our tutorial, excuse me, my phone's just gone off straight away, is create this base turret here. Now you can see behind it, I've created another base turret there. I didn't like that quite so much. They're very, very similar, aren't they? Except this one, I don't I just prefer the textures to this. Now, this is going to be the base turret for all of our, uh, our turrets that they're going to sit on. So we only have to do this once. Now, I'm deliberately avoiding using GIMP this time to just keep the learning curve down. But realistically, a lot of this stuff we shouldn't be doing in Blender because there's no easy way back. Whereas um, in GIMP, you do have the option of using layers and you can remove layers. So you can all this stuff with these rivets and colors here. You've got the potential to add and remove them, even change the colors on them. In Blender, that's a lot more difficult, but we'll come on to that. For, for the sake of clarity, we're just going to create this turret here and texture it. This is the sort of size we're going to be talking about. This is these two here. They're the same. This one here, I didn't like the colors quite so much. So we're going to go for one of these guys here. Um, so it's not the end of the world, uh, it doesn't have to look brilliant. I'm going to make it look pretty good though, so that we've got something if we want to, we can you know, just show our work and show, show what we did. Alright, so we're going to spin over to Blender. By the way, I've also assumed that you have Blender and Unity installed, so um, if I've, I'll put the links in the description. But for now, you can see that Blender is uh, Blender.org and it's currently Blender 2.81a. I think Blender 2.82 is not far away. Uh, but I'm going to use 2.81a and don't worry, the 2.82 is not going to be that different. It's just going to have some new features. It's not going to have changed that much. And Unity as well. You're going to need Unity. So if you go to unity.com and click on Get Started, and then you want the individual license, so don't panic when you see these figures here. Just click on Individual and Personal Free Get Started there. Yeah? And I think somewhere here, I can't exactly remember whereabouts it is. There's a download option. Start here. There you go, and you just and then you click on download. And what that'll do is that'll install Unity. It'll also install Visual Studio, which is free. So there's some registration to go through at the start, uh, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> but once you're through that, you'll only have to do it once, and you'll be good to go. All right. So here's our turret that we're going to go for. So I'm going to spin over to Blender now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through uh, as I go, but I'll probably miss some bits here and there. I'm assuming you've got a relative uh, understanding of Blender. This is Blender 2.81, so quite a lot has changed since well 2.79. Uh, once they went to 2.8, they changed the layout. They've changed uh, kind of the way some things work. You can see, for instance, the panels are now on a on a vertical. Uh, strip rather than the horizontal strip that used to be there. It just looks a little bit cleaner. They've, they've asked us now to default to the left click to select. So when you first run it, it'll say to you, do you want to use left click or right click to select? And you might think, well, that's just stupid. Obviously, left click is select. It's left click is select for everything since forever. But um, actually, in Blender, uh, Blender used to be right click to select stuff. So um, it did take a bit of getting used to it, but funnily enough, when you got used to it, it was actually quite. Quite, quite useful doing it that way. I'm not sure why, you just got the hang of it. Uh, but now it's left click, so choose left click. The other option you've got is what to do with the space bar. Excuse me while I uh, click do not disturb there. Um, uh, the other option is, to, is uh, what to do with the space bar, and I make it search so that uh, you, if I click on space now it brings up the search screen. It's up to you, I use that occasionally. Now one thing I must do is switch on the screencast keys, which I've installed. So uh, I've noticed that you have to kind of you have to sort of switch it off and on again, even if you change these panels, which I'll come to. So that's actually a bit buggy, um, which is annoying. So you can follow along here. Uh, like I said, again, I might forget to um, switch the screencast keys back on again. Hopefully they'll fix that bug um, very, very soon. Right, so here's our cube that you get by default when you... Uh, uh, open Blender. By the way, I'm just I'm holding left middle. I'm holding middle mouse button down and then panning my mouse around to move around there. Okay. Um, what I can do is I want to create a new window, so I've got a reference image. Basically, that reference image there. So I took a snippet of it earlier. So what you can do is if you go over to the far left hand side in this in this case and down to the corner, you'll see the little X appear in the bottom left of the screen. Now, if I let if I left click and drag to the right, I can split my panes up. Lovely. Okay. And I can actually see this in two. Uh, in two views now, I'll actually move that all around and see in a different view. But I don't want to do that. What I actually want to do is bring up the image editor. Okay, and I'm going to open an image here, and I, hopefully, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to find it. Um, it's that one. So you can see basically what I did earlier on was I took a little image of it. Uh, it's not very high res, is it? But um, but you can see you can see what. So that's what we're going to be shooting for. Okay, when we're trying to create our, our image. And we actually, we've got a good start, haven't we, with our base cube. Sometimes the first thing people do is delete the base cube. Not today. We're going to use this base cube. Um, 
clearly it's too high so let's scale it and we're going to scale this, the cube by pressing S and then pressing Z and that scales it on just one axis in this case the Z axis now what I'm going to do I think is make it 0.33 3 for fun okay because uh, I think it's about the third of uh, the size of the cube if I just spin back here uh, to unity this one here was a excuse me this one here that I, I think I didn't like so much that was 0 0.25 so I think it's just slightly shorter which I think is correct right so let's go back here okay so we've got that going there so now if we press um, uh, sorry, shift and middle mouse button to kind of pan around like that you see that there okay so things like that we can do um, so if I now just uh, press tab to go into edit mode this brings up a whole load of new options now rather than just edit the object itself what we can actually do now is edit the faces the edges and the individual pixels uh, vertices if we want to by just clicking it and then pressing G to move it around now I don't actually let me just check something hang on oh, now if you can I can't you used to be able to hold a button I can't remember what it was and it would move it around but it doesn't seem to work anymore or either I've forgotten what it is but you can move these around with G okay so now we're in edit mode we've got a little bit more control over what we're doing. So what I'm going to actually do is press 3 to go into face mode and then left click to go to the top face. Okay, so you've got your choices here as well by the way. You don't have to press what it's 1, 2 and 3. So 1 is the vertex select, 2 is the edge select and 3 is face select. Okay, so we're going to press 3 and then we're going to go to top view and we're going to press S and scale it down to something like about there. Let's just take a look from that angle there that looks about the same to me I think maybe we can just do that just have a little look yeah I think so maybe a touch more don't know looks pretty good okay so you can see what's happening here we've got a, another edge here and then it kind of goes in and down so let's oh sorry so let's just do this again now what we can do is we can press I to inset okay let's just bring that in a little bit just a small bit like that there and now what we'll do right we, we could do I again but I'm going to just use a different one which is E to extrude and that automatically um, locks to the z-axis can you see that so let's just move that down just a touch and then we'll also just go top view and we'll just scale that in as well like that okay so now we've got our oh no that's too low isn't it let's grab it on the z we don't it doesn't need to be too far apart there we go that looks pretty good to start with doesn't it so if we now go to uh, front view what I want to do as well oh sorry I just tabbed out to go into object mode I'm just going to grab this on the z-axis and move it up I'm keeping an eye on that D value on the on the um, top left of this of this panel. And I'm going to try 0 0.333, and there you go. So that actually moves it to effectively what we call the ground plane here in Blender. All right. Keep an eye on that orange dot. That's important. We'll come back to that later on. That's called the origin of the object. So now we'll tab back into edit mode. And what I want to do now, uh, it's probably already too late, is press Control R to create a ledge loop. No, it isn't. Okay. Now we're not too late. So we're going to create a ledge loop there. And then right click, all right. And then we're going to also, um, in order to create these bits here, actually before, well, let's just create the two edge loops like that. So we'll create those two along there, lovely. And then what we'll do is we'll create these. Um, if, apologies, let me just do that again. So I was, I wasn't in case that wasn't clear. I'm pressing Control R to create what's called an edge loop, which creates basically another set of faces. It sort of splits it up. You can move the mouse wheel to. Um, to add more edge loops we just want the one so I'm going to left click and then it gives you the option to move it around but I'm going to right click to, to keep it in the center and I'm going to do the same on this axis you see if you move it around you see you get different options as you see so I'm going to click for the, the that axis there and again right click to cancel now that it was important to do that before I did this these bevels uh, because um, what happens in the middle here is um, Blender likes to use four-sided shapes and uh, quads uh, so a, a face here uh, has four sides. It can work in triangles as well, but once you go past four sides, things get a bit. Uh, it, it struggles to. Um, well, it can't uh, create edge loops because it doesn't know, you know, which which edge to route along. Okay, so what we'll do now is we will go into front view. I'm going to press Z, and then hover over uh, wireframe and click. And then oh, there we go. Okay, click on wireframe, and you can see now that you can see through them. I'm going to press 1 to go into vertex select mode. I press 1 again to go into front view. I'm going to press Alt A to deselect everything. And then B to box select. And just I'm left clicking and dragging here. Okay. And I'm also going to go to uh, press 3 to go to side view. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. We're all right. 3 to go to side view. And then press B again 
and select those. So we're left just with this uh, right hand corner here and I'm going to press X select vertices and you're thinking oh what has he done? Well this is pretty common practice actually what we're actually going to do now is create a mirror modifier. Uh, sorry if we click on this spanner here we're going to add a mirror modifier. So it's under mirror, under generate and then mirror and you can see it's automatically created one for me on the X axis but I'm also going to want one on the Y axis and now miracle of miracles what happens if I if I just grab one of these edges it grabs all four <clears throat> and this is really useful it means we don't have to do work multiple times so what I'll do if I just Z click Z and then click on solid view and I'm going to press 2 to go into edge select mode and then alt left click somewhere in the middle of that 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 edge there and what that does I don't know if you can see is it selected all of the edges along that edge loop. This is why we want to work in quads. This, this is the sort of thing that's nice and easy if you've got quads going. Now one other thing I want to do before I create the bevel is I just want to tab out into um, object mode. I'm going to press N and then go back to item up here and you can you see that the scale here is 1 1 and 0 0.333. Well, that's because we scaled it on the Z didn't we? Now weird things happen in Blender if this scale isn't 1 1 1. So I find it quite useful quite often just to press Control A and apply rotation and scale and now if I go to N again I should have kept that open shouldn't I you'll see that Z has miraculously become 1 so in this world now this thing is ex scaled exactly correctly okay if that doesn't make a lot of sense don't panic just just try and keep the uh, transform to uh, 111 on the uh, on the scale so we're going to tab back into edit mode and I'm going to press control uh, that, that uh, edge loop is still selected I'm going to press control B and then that out roughly to what I think is the same sort of size and you see because of the mirrors on like magic the other four are happening as well so about there I'm thinking yeah I like I like that a lot that looks very close actually and now we just need to add these rivers now this is to the size here. I'm going to add them to this piece here okay to the to along the x-axis so to speak um, so I'm going to add them here so what I'll do is I'll create another edge loop for Chris control R and now I'm doing it along the horizontal plane just left click and maybe yeah maybe about there ish and I've probably realized now that maybe I can press control R I can I don't, the, there is a problem if you press control R you can see it stops there which is weird uh, um, I'll explain if I just left click and then right click you'll see what's happened this face here now has a lot of size one two three four five six sides okay we can fix that in a minute actually um, let, we will fix that in a minute um, so that this is a quad as well because that just makes it easier for unwrapping and things uh, so if I press 3 to go into face mode select that face there and then press E to extrude and if I do it automatically it does this really rather weird angle it's not that weird actually it's along it's what it's called it's normal if you can see it's kind of the angle that that edge is facing uh, that face is facing so I'm going to press X to constrain it to the X axis and now it's actually going along the flat axis which is what we want so I'll just try about there-ish Press 1 to go into front view, that looks okay, and I'll select these two, uh, this edge here, which is mirrored over here, go to front view again, and I can just grab that, by about there, okay, and I also want to grab this edge here, and just grab that on the Y, and pull that in, Let's just go to 3, I'm going to rotate it as well, so it looks something sensible, maybe? All those edges, oh, all of those edges look a little um, far over to me. So I'm just going to select those three. In fact, I might just do that as well. Just do Alt Shift, left click, and then G on the Y, just to pull it in a bit, like that. I'm happy. I'm happy. Okay. So the one thing we can do as well, by the way, is remove the bottom faces. Um, when we are texture painting, we're doing low poly stuff. It's there's no point in having faces you're not going to see. So if you definitely know you're never going to see them remove them particularly if they're large like this and they're going to they're take up texture space later on so let's go back into uh, edit mode and press 3 and select those two faces there X and faces and you can see now ah, look at this as well you see this face here the, this, this is one of the things that's always caught me out in Blender all the years there's faces that are inside that you would never have known about and that can cause problems later on so let's just click on that press X faces and because we're all mirrored up nicely it's deleting them everywhere else for us Okay, so we've got ourselves, I think, the base mesh. So let's just tab out into edit mode and click 
uh, into object mode, excuse me, and click apply. Uh, you have to be in object mode to apply uh, modifiers. I think, I think all of them. I'm not 100 sure. Okay, so we have our mesh. Now there's a couple of things we can do just to save a few more uh, verts. One, we can just uh, select this edge loop here. We don't need that. You can see it was only really being used for the mirror modifier. So let's press X and edge loops. I just press Alt A, so you can see now that's gone. Now we do have a lot of vertices around here, and like I say, we have got an end gone here uh, with loads of sides. So we could fix that. Perhaps it's best practice, and I should show you how. So let's just go into three face mode, and we'll just delete those two faces there. Press X, faces. Okay, we're left with a big cavernous hole. So let's create some faces to to make sure they're all quads. So again, I'm going to go into edge mode, edge select mode. I'm going to select that diagonal and that diagonal, and press face that diagonal, that diagonal press face. You can, I guess you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just selecting two diagonals, uh, two edges and then just joining them up. Okay. Now, there's a few things here that we could actually clean up a little bit more. We don't need to have all of these edges. We can join them together. I'm not going to do that. Um, if, if you want me to do this, then please let me know in the comments. I'll show you how to do it. At the moment, if we just tab into object mode, we can see that this is a 70 faces object, which is next to nothing. So I'm not really worried about that, but we could potentially get that down to about 50 um, if that really, really mattered. But 70 is really not very much for any system today. Okay, so let's save up. So I've created a folder called Tower Defense 2020. <clears throat> and you can see I've created my previous two test ones. So let's just do Tower uh, Turret Base 3. I'm going to call this, for confusing reasons, Turret Base 4 um, because I was mucking around in Unity as well and I think I've got a Turret Base 3 in Unity. So let's just call this Turret Base 4 and click on Save Blender File. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, we're back. So please ignore the alt sh Shift Alt P. I should probably just double check that we are recording. Yes, we are. Apologies. I'm back in the game now. I just need to double check stuff now. Um, we can actually definitely remove that edge loop, can't we? that one there, uh, that's not doing anything, there we go, so we've already saved some, but we could potentially merge all these together, I'm not going to, anyway, um, so now, yeah, there you go, you see, we're back to 59 faces, makes a difference, not really, okay, so we've got this, now we need to unwrap it, um, before we texture paint it, we need to unwrap it, there's a couple of ways we could do this, we could just let Blender go ahead and do it, or we could do it ourselves, now I've done it myself, for this occasion because it is actually quite straightforward if you if this was a lot more dense the mesh you might want to start thinking about doing it the uh, the automatic way uh, but let's go to UV editing I'm just going to select everything now none of those faces are done let's just quickly go out and make sure we just do control a rotation and scale and if I just press U unwrap that's going to be a disaster okay what it's tried to do is it's try to flatten the image but what we can also do is press U and then Smart UV Project. And what this is saying is anything over 66 degrees, it will create a new sort of section for us. Let's just, let's just run it and you'll see what I mean. And it's, you can see it's done this kind of pretty okay effort actually. Uh, but there's quite a lot of space not being used and I think I can do better. Uh, I've done this a few times now. So what we'll do is we need to create some seams. Um, so I'm going to go into Edge Select Mode and I'm just going to select this guy here. Oh, one thing I didn't do, I didn't bevel all these edges, did I? If we just go back to uh, layout, I didn't bevel all these two edges here, did I? Let's do that. Let's see if I can just tab in. I should be able to do those two and those two at the same time. Obviously, this would have been better in mirror mode. Let's just see. Like that. Yeah, that looks like that's worked on both sides, hasn't it? Good. Okay, so let's go back to uh, UV editing. Uh, so, so I don't know if you saw that. I just clicked on the UV editing window up here. Um, and now I'm going to start creating some seams. So I'm just going to go around here, left click, shift, left click, shift, left click, and then these two as well. Okay, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Uh, shift, left click, left. I'm just going to go around here. And so, uh, not that one, those two, and those two. I'm going to, I'm going to press Control E, mark seam. Okay, you see that this created these little red lines here. Now, if I just go over, hover over my mouse over one of these areas here, and just press L, you'll see that surprises me. Okay, if if that um, if that what normally happens is it selects everything, but um, if it, if it does select everything, just go down here and click click seam. I think if you do normal look, it selects everything. But if you click seam, it will do just what I want. And now, if I just press U, unwrap, it does a very nice unwrap, a much cleaner looking unwrap there. All right. Uh, so we can actually, those two are actually handled now, those two edge 
stands or whatever you want to call them. So now we just need to work out how to unwrap uh, this main piece here. And what I've been doing basically, oh, basically is um, not that, <laughs> is clicking on these edges here. Uh, by the way, if you left click one angle and then control click, it will it will uh, run an edge loop up to that point. So we're going to do the same thing, shift there and then shift control click there. So we're just going to um sorry shift control left click uh, you can also notice that the blooming screen keys have disappeared again that's what i'm talking about so i just need to turn it off and on again there we go so now you can see what i'm doing so i'm going to shift left click and then shift control click there you go so now you can see what i'm doing and then shift left click shift control shift left click shift control left click shift left click Shift control this is the sort of thing maybe I could have done before it was unwrapped. I don't know. Shift left click, shift control. So you see now what I've done. I've kind of uh, put, um, so I'm going to put seams. If I just do that, control E, mark seam. I'll put seams along all those edges. Now if I just press L now and then press U, unwrap, you can see what that's actually done is it's it's kind of sort of flattened it out rather nicely. Um, I'm very happy with the way that looks. Um, so, but now we need to do everything. Let's just press N to get rid of the properties panel and A, U, unwrap. Okay, now it's almost perfect. We can squeeze a little bit more space out of this, but I did struggle. Um, if I just press, uh, if I click on this one, oh, this option here below. So if you press four in the UV editor, it's you can select whole islands. All right, let's just grab that a second, put that in the middle. I think if I just grab that, I think I can do something like that just to squeeze it. And then this one here, I can press R180 and grab it and stick it there like that. And it doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Let's just grab that and put that into the corner over there. And then rotate 90. Wrong. Oh, that'll do. I don't care. Then grab it. Yeah, it's just not going to fit. Um, we might be able to go a little bit actually if I just do that. And do the same with you, rotate minus 90. Let's grab you over here. Yeah. A, G, X. Nope. It's not having any of it, guys. Fine. I'm just going to press A, U. Oh, by the way, um, Blender is kind of context sensitive to the panel you're in. So if I press A, A over here, it selects everything. Uh, so if Alt A, it deselects everything. But if I'm over here and I press A, it selects everything. Oh, AD selects everything. You see, so it does bin which panel you're in. So I'm just going to click U again and do unwrap. That's a pretty big uh, uh, unwrap that. I'm pretty pleased with the way it's used the space. So now we're ready to texture paint this. Okay, so this is probably the most long-winded piece. I'm going to probably uh, time, well, I am going to time-lapse this for speed. You may wish to be a little bit more... Uh, so I'm looking for economical with your time uh, and just get on with it. I'm going to try and make this look reasonably good. I want it to look like these guys here, but maybe you're, you're not too worried. Uh, you just want to get the main the main gameplay working, which is fine. Um, I'll put the links to the uh, images and the meshes for your to do with as you please. I don't mind if you make a game out of them or whatever. Just please let me know that you've uh, you've done it and how you're getting on. But uh, so let's go in to the texture paint option, okay? And when you go to texture paint on this panel up here you'll see that you get this rather nasty looking pink uh, uh, object now which is basically its way of saying there's no texture applied it's trying to make sure it lets you know we can see our UV here so what we need to do is we need to create a texture to paint on that's very very easy just make sure you've got the screwdriver and spanner here and click on uh, where it says no textures just click on the plus and we're going to add a base color okay now based on previous experience the best way to do this is uh, 1024 by 1024 should be fine um, we want to make this color um, keep it in the middle and then go for a pretty dark gray and you can see that that's going down okay something like that and then we don't want any alpha alpha is, is all for transparency we don't care about any of that and we're going to click OK and suddenly as if by magic our turret appears and it's kind of a pretty grim looking gray and if we just if I just left click and hold over it I can uh, uh, yes yeah, so, as well sorry as well over here you'll notice this hasn't changed but if I just click on this little mountain and sun icon here I can click material base color and you can see that my painting what that's done to the image I'm just going to control Z it so it doesn't do that now I've gone for it you can see a pretty dark green here kind of like a, an army green so what we're going to do 
first thing we're going to do actually is sample that color there and add it to the color palette. So I'm going to click down here. We have no color palette. Color palettes are useful when you want to revert back to certain colors. You should probably have a palette of, well, of however many you like, but um, you know, keep them consistent. Don't just constantly change colors. Try and have a, a, a palette that you work with. So I'm going to create a new palette. Okay and I am going to press S to sample and then just move my mouse over it and then left click and you can see, or well you can't really see here, but there is actually an icon there that is the that is the colour and we can go back to that colour just by clicking it. So if I just pick another colour like blue there, lighten it up a bit, whatever, right? I've, I've gone for that, but if I click here, it'll take me back to that colour we've just saved. So what we need to do is create basically a base layer uh, for, for this turret and we're going to build up that base layer and then we'll add the kind of the, the sort of the edging and the shading around the the insets here later so what we need to do is pick a color not too dark I don't think somewhere around there ish maybe line it up a touch okay and we'll just what we'll do is just zoom in and, I'm, and um, I can adjust the size of my brush by pressing F oh by the way if you haven't got it selected that's the one you want selected the draw brush okay so I can make this bigger and smaller by pressing uh, F and then moving it out and I can also if I just spin to the top here you'll see there's a radius and a strength if I press shift F I can adjust the strength okay so if I just do that a lot lower like that you probably won't even see it that low just, uh, shift F and then just make it like that it should be a lot, a lot lighter there you go can you see that okay so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to revert to my pen tablet uh, and, and, and use this because this is actually a lot easier to apply now for speed as well, I'm going to be a bit lazy and put symmetry on, on the X and Y axis. Okay, so everything I do on these axes here, it will be applied on both sides. Um, also on the fall off, this is the, this is the, uh, if you like the way the the pen. Maybe it'd be a bit clearer if I showed you an example. This one here, it just it it starts off quite thick and then drops off as you as you draw along. If I just go to full strength and just lower this down. You'll see if I just draw there, can you see that in the middle it's kind of thick and then it just fuzzies out? If I go for this fall off here, there's no there's no fall off at all on this one. And if I do this, maybe I should have done this somewhere else, I'll just do this over here, you can see that there's zero fall off, and now it looks very well almost pixelated in this example. There's no shading in. So the the fall off I want to use is this one. It it's it basically it's pretty thick in the middle, but very quickly decreases. So let's just show you. You see, so it's very quickly disappearing. Quite thick in the middle, but not anywhere else. The reason I like that is because it seems to blend a bit better uh, with, with with underlying textures. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to change this normal fall off to something like 60. Okay, and what that means is, if I if I uh, go up here and if I just start drawing, it won't. I hope, although it has in this example. Let's just change that down to like. Oh, excuse me. Control Z. Let's change it to 30. If I go back to the top here, if I draw now, I hope it won't draw below because that angle was greater than 30 degrees. And this is quite useful sometimes. I'm gonna I'm gonna up that to 60 again, or maybe 45. Now let's make it 60. So it's annoying because sometimes you don't want it to do it, and sometimes you do. Um, so we'll just have a little play around with that again. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to turn my my strength right down. But you'll notice there's this little icon here. If you do have a tablet, you can um, click that, and it will actually also be adjusted by the strength. So if I just get my tablet now, if I do a very light stroke, you can see like that. But also I can do a very firm stroke. Yeah, my tablet's not the greatest. Um, <laughs> it's got 1,024 levels of pressure. Well, that should be enough. But I don't think it works particularly well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around now, and I'm going to. Um, basically base paint this layer uh, all the way around. It shouldn't take too long because I've got a couple of um, uh, sim levels of symmetry on, uh, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just gently applying. I'm almost tempted to say it's too strong early, but let's just see how we go. Just applying this. Now you notice you can't see it very well. Um, so if that happens, what you can do is you can just go maybe to rendered mode and just start turning on, or turn on some of these lights and see how you get on. Maybe do it the other way around. Yeah, I've gone pretty dark here. Also, the, you do have this like, this this uh, image as a reference as well. So, have a little play around. That's probably the one to go for, right? So you can kind of see a little bit more. But it does look a bit weird. But at least you can see where you've done. Uh, the other option is just go back to solid mode and just carry on. 
So I'm going to do this now. What I'll probably do is, is mute it. Don't be don't be afraid to use Control Z either. Also, and just maybe I might just get rid of them and just lower lower the um, strength a bit more because we're going to do this a few times. Okay, so I'll, I will um, I'll time lapse this now and then I'll I'll stop and come back once we um, once I've done the first round. Okay, so one thing I'm going to try, by the way, is if I bring this um, cursor down here and then uh, le hold left click and pull up, I'm going to create another panel. And what in this panel I'm going to show you is the um, shader editor. Now, <clears throat> one thing we might be able to get away with, because there's a lot of shine on here. Now, if I just go down here, maybe I can tweak the metallic or the roughness. There we go. So that's a lot easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I don't know if that made any sense, but don't worry too much. The, the nodes editor is, is probably a subject for another day. Um, for now, we're just going to leave it as it is. Um, it's, it's, the nodes are very powerful. In fact, they, they control the way uh, Blender does all of its uh, rendering. So, but, but it's, it's so complicated that, well, I, I certainly don't claim to be an expert at it either. But it, um, it needs a lot of time to work on, uh, to take a look at and whatever to learn. So... I'm almost done with this layer here. All right, so we can just just kind of you can see that what everything I'm doing is being mirrored. So I might just turn that off shortly because it's creating a, some odd effects. I think, like I say, you know, this is I appreciate. You know, you're thinking I just want to get on with creating my games or whatever, and I get that. But it's worth you know if you if you you well, you can always download these textures um, if you wanted to. Now, one thing that's happened here, I don't know if you can see this, some sort of weird line has happened. So I'm just going to turn off symmetry. I'm also going to um, click on this here, this brush here. This is the smear brush. And what I should be able to do is just left click and push those in there. Yeah, and just move them around. Now I've got symmetry off. I'm going to go around and just tidy up some of these grey areas. Just a little bit, just so we've got a reasonable base layer. All right. And you're thinking that looks terrible. And it, it, it does look terrible because we're kind of mucking around with some of these settings as well uh, they'll, it'll look a little bit better when um, if you actually look at it here it doesn't look too bad does it in the image panel uh, it doesn't look too bad but it's actually looks a little bit clumsy on here but it'll, it'll look pretty stylized when we finished right okay so that's that bit done I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to here uh, change back to the paint mode and then I'm gonna try qu quickly add that to the palette again that's not I always forget uh, then I always find myself adding a bit more, right? So what we could potentially do, um, maybe just move it inwards a bit and then darken it. It's hard to know. Maybe try something a little darker, just like that. Let's have a little look, see how we're going here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and find. Actually, I might just zo do zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to try and find the the bits that haven't been done. I'm going to darken them up. Okay. Uh, to be honest with you, like I say, I don't think this is needs to be as as you know as as well done as I'm doing it now. I think you can get away. Actually, I'm very pleased with the way this is looking in this mode. Actually, um, <laughs> I've had some uh, I've had some unpleasant experiences previously uh, doing this. It's definitely an art. Definitely an art. Seeing and getting an eye for it. For me, it's more chance. Uh, what will I end up with? Okay, I am. So I am using a tablet here. So I'm gonna have to use my mouse just to get this back into some sort of place that I can work with. I'm using a Wacom uh, bamboo uh, from about five years ago. Let's see, I'm not happy with that. I've overcooked it there on this bit. So let's just go in there. You can keep an eye on up here as well. Something to stop you. You can paint in these bits if you wish. Uh, it's worth maybe just keeping an eye on some of these bits if you want to. Nothing stopping you doing that. <coughs> all right. I mean, this is this is you know this is pretty easy to do. This one. It's it's almost all one color. I'm going to colorize some of the bits later on, but 
the base itself is basically the same colour all the way around. If I just can I do that? No. Sorry, I'm trying things with my tablet that uh, it's not letting me do. And I think you see I'm just getting a little bit overzealous here. Can you see I'm just maybe adding a little bit too much? But that's okay. We're really just praying that you really should take your time on this and just try and fill it so it's lovely and smooth and just looking nicely textured in two layers. You can see there's some issues there. This isn't going to be the end of the world. I'm going to do one more colour. I'm again, add that to the palette. And just for fun, I'm going to try something like a dark blue. Just see how that gets on. Um, no, I think that's not going to do it. <laughs> um, I tried lighter blue, couldn't I? Just maybe just see how... This is the thing, you can experiment with this stuff. Just to... You never know. Let's just go with it. Let's just go with it. We can always just regret it later on, can't we? No, I'm not going to go with it. Sorry. It does kind of create a khaki look to it, doesn't it? But it's not really what I was going for. So I'm going to go back to my... What happened then? Um, looks to me like I've ended up with the same colour twice. Okay, not to worry. Um, I can just delete that one with a minus key. Um, so I'm just going to come around. Maybe just a, maybe a slightly more... Just call them more bluey green then, and just darken it up a bit. All right, this is my last pass again. I'll be quick now. Again, I'm just looking for lighter areas and just going to darken them up. So we've got something that we like. All right. see up here I think this is pretty good actually I think that, that's that, that is the kind of color we should be shooting for let's just see when I get into unity it might look flipping terrible let's find out um, okay so you're doing well in terms of learning here hopefully I've taught you a couple of things if you haven't learned already one is how to uh, begin modeling and next thing I had to texture paint uh, yeah, so you can do this with a mouse but it's a little bit more tricky although probably this with a mouse is probably one of the easiest things you're going to do just going round, just double checking. Right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. That looks to me like it's been pretty well textured all the way around. Right, so what you need to do is go into the finer details. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, for, to start with, I'm going to actually create the, if I just spin back to my layout, I'm going to create these kind of white, white what do you call it, sort of just edged edges that make it look like it's been worn, uh, you know, sort of been well uh, sort of rubbed along so to speak uh, so they've got kind of shiny edges there and down the sides here and around that sharp edge there and on the inner edges uh, we'll make them darker okay this is pretty standard stuff actually it seems like this is what you've got to do uh, there are PBR tools like substance painter that will do this for you um, so what we'll do then is we will get a pretty much as white as we can maybe a cheeky bit on the green side and then lighten it right up and then do that and you can see that it's um not uh, power, not strong enough and um, we're going to go up here and we're going to adjust the strength up and we're going to make the brush a lot smaller and that's looking pretty much like oh, maybe now, the thing you've got to remember here is when you pick the brush size try not to zoom in and out of your mesh <laughs> when you're doing things like this because you'll end up um, making the brush size bigger or smaller so the other thing we can do by the way which is rather cool is we can um, add a bit of jitter to it. I can talk about the stroke method later, but for now, we can add a bit of jitter. Let me just make it a lot so we can I can show you what it looks like. That you can see now that's kind of cool, right? It's kind of created this sort of randomness to it, which is cool. That's 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 really what we're after. And also, let's control Z that. I want a sharp fall off. So if we go again, you can see it's much more stuck together, much more strong. Right? Uh, say that. I don't know. Maybe that is better. I'm not sure. We want a little less jitter than that, that's for sure. Okay, I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to make the uh, strength a bit stronger. Again, I'm still using my tablet, so pressure in there. Um, yeah, radius of four pixels, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to try. Oh, let's turn, let's turn X and Y symmetry on for your sanity and mine. 
Um, but again, you might want to do this. We're just going to start bringing it across. I'm just gently bringing these over. Pretty pleased with the way this is looking. Yeah, I'm happy. And did I add that to the colour palette? I did not. So let's quickly get that there. Okay. Looks a little bit too jittery, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with it now because I've, I've started. This is where that fall off could catch you out. If you set it to a low number, you might find that it doesn't actually allow you to um, draw on both sides of this edge here, which is what I'm doing. So with the power of the X and Y symmetry, I'm done on that bit. So let's just do these um, our upper edges here. Again, just following this up. One thing I've noticed is, is you know, as, as, you, as you get better, obviously, you'll know what to go to. But don't be afraid to just keep trying and control zing. <laughs> that's the thing um, until you get one that you're happy with I'm going to go down this time yeah look see I think because of that angle look it's done that rather weird thing I'm going to let it go now um, the, the basic way to get around that is to make sure you've got it exactly there sort of thing so you've got it exactly uh, sort of that, that edge perpendicular is that the term to your own uh, to your view so that you're not uh, getting that, that weird looking sort of drag down there. Can you see that? I can maybe have a little fix of that in a minute. Let's okay, I'll just finish this edge off here and then we'll take a look. Can't quite see what I'm doing so I'm going to change the angle. I can just about see the line, maybe you can't like that okay and also we've got these ones here haven't we okay, I'm going just slowly with the tablet they're too they're too um, too jittery <laughs> so I'm just going to bring that back makes me think that maybe I should have been the A little bit more cautious earlier on. A little less jitter. Okay, that looks pretty well worn now, doesn't it? Now, where was I? This edge here. What we might be able to do is soften this up. Let's make it, oh, oh, God. Just pull my earphones off there. Um, okay, so we might just be able to just soften. No, let's try a smear. That smear's working, isn't it? So we can just maybe just. Bring these back up a little bit. Again, we've got the symmetry on, so that's quite good. That edge looks okay. Although maybe I might want to um, just strengthen that. Okay, so we've got all our outside edges. You're just thinking, gosh, that looks very uh, rough, and it does, but it's bear in mind this is a stylized image. Um, okay, so next, what we're going to do. Is we are going to make the uh, these inner edges dirty. So what we might be able to do is just take that colour that we've already got. I'm going to go big again, and I'm going to go light on strength. Let's bring it like that. Okay, and now just just dirty these. Pardon me. I'm working. You can check. Sometimes it's worth just checking here, just to see. And I can actually just see that is working now. So I've done. I've gone large, and you think you don't panic because what I'll do. I'm just making that there dirty, and then I, what I will do is I'll up the strength a lot. Shrink the size of the pen, and then get into the crevices. So really dirty up those bits there. The They've gathered a lot of dirt, particularly at the bottom, right? I think if, if X axis, there we go, that's good. I don't worry, I mean, this does look really weird at the minute. I know it looks like a something that, yeah, <laughs> really hasn't been well uh, uh, drawn, but it will look better once we've adjusted the roughness and the metallic. So let's bring that back up again. 
bring the strength back down maybe just zoom in one nudge there we go we can, we can do oh look we've missed that edge there as well we missed that edge uh, to to um to sharpen up i'm just making this edge dirty well, i think i am it's hard to know isn't it you can just about see it putting a little bit more pressure on it yeah you can see it there you go all right, so there we go. So we've got a kind of dirty inside edge there, and let's do what we did before. Let's up the strength, and then um, press F to make that smaller, and we'll get involved in adding a bit more dirt right in the middle. Can't actually see the line I'm working towards, but I'm taking a wild guess. There we go. We can see that. I can see that line. Okay. Maybe. Right, okay, so where were we? So let's go back to this one. And we can get... Uh, I don't think there's any scatter right now. Oh, there is. There is still scatter. Good. So we can... Um, 100% sure where the line is, but symmetry is helping me here. Symmetry is guiding me. Yeah, it's looking a little bit more jaggedy than I would like. This is the problem um, when you're not using a, a uh, an editor like GIMP or Photoshop is that I'm kind of stuck with it. Uh, there are tools for layers, um, but they're not very... Um, well, they are there. They're, some, some, are, some are free, I guess, but there are some that you have to pay for as well. Okay, let's just take a little look from a distance. And by the way, what we'll do... It doesn't actually look too bad. When you go... Um, if us just bring our... World well, options back up. It'll actually look a lot better now. That's, that's actually looking pretty good. When we've got our bumps and stuff in there, you'll you'll like it a lot more. So let's bring this back up. Uh, scene lights. Was it scene lights? Scene world. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some kind of detail to it, make it look a little bit more interesting. Because at the minute it looks very flat and boring. Uh, so what we can do is we can add some bolts to it and stuff like that. So let's do that now. Um, if we go up here, we've got our material based color. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a bump map. Click on bump, and what you see is it defaults to this kind of grey colour. Let's click on that. Say oh, yes, it's okay. All right, and nothing's happened, right? But actually, if you look at the shader editor, this rather funky things happened here. It's created a material bump for us. It's created a bump, and it's plugged it into the normal. Oh my goodness, what's that? What does that all mean? Well, what it means is if I, I click on the material bump here. Um, the image has changed over there, which is good. I wasn't expecting it to do that. If I go to rendered mode, which I'm in, if I now um, draw in white, let's get the strength up to full. You'll see. Yeah, well, interestingly, because I've got uh, um, uh, jitter still on, it's doing that real weird thing. It's just Control Z that, and then do that. If I now, if I draw there, look, you'll see. Let's turn the symmetry off as well. <laughs> um, You'll see you can draw kind of it gives the effect of a bump okay it's not really there um it's not always visible not really very obvious but you can kind of see it kind of sticks out now and by the same token if i go to the top here i make it black it looks like it's gone in so we can use this to do a variety of things first things first what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some bolts along the bottom uh so um reminds me we need to activate my windows i'm going to activate the uh Activate the Y axis. Actually, activate the Y axis, and I'm going to press three, uh, sorry one, to go to this view here. Press F to make this a bit larger. And what we're going to do, we're at the stroke method here. We're going to change that to line. And what that allows me to do is draw a line like that uh, by left clicking and then holding and then letting go when you want to let go. Lovely. Uh, but if I also do this and then hold the Alt key, it will constrain it to 45s and 90s. So that's quite good. So we want that's the kind of thing we want. And you'll see that because I put Y axis, it's done it on both sides. But what I'm actually after is a more bolty look. Bolty? Is that a word? I don't know. Um, so we can do that by using that one there. And also we need to change the colour, don't we? So it's out, right? Okay. And then... Um, so I apologise. I had to quickly stop there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this fall off here you can actually adjust these parameters what I want to do to make a kind of bolty look bolty look 
is just grab one of these uh, these fields here. I've got. I think I went on that one. That's it. And I'm just going to grab this one over here and just put it there. Um, I'm going to click on that one and press X to get rid of it. That's created a, a sort of a fall off there. What I actually want to do is if I just click on that and then click on vector handle, it creates a straight down. If I click on it now, you can see that's a bit more like a bolt. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Potentially we could put something in the middle as well, so if we just drag, how do I do that, uh, maybe, something like that, that looks pretty cool doesn't it, there we go, so let's just do that, there's a top tip for you, okay, so let's just move that just a bit around, we can play around with this now can't we, so we've got something we like, that's fine, right, so what we'll do now, and make sure we've got symmetry on, and the next thing we do, so we've got line, and we've got this thing called spacing, so let's yank that up to 150, and now if I draw a line, what you'll see is it actually separates them out, which is exactly what we want, isn't it? So let's just click on here, about there-ish, hold. Now there is, sometimes it can be a bit of a, a bit of a guess. I'm going to stick with that. No, I'm not going to make them bigger. Um, I'm going to make them bigger, and I'll do that by just zooming in, maybe just making you a bit bigger as well. Click, Alt, and then left click. Yeah, and then sometimes if you if you can play around, it hasn't done that one because I've just gone a bit short. So I'll just manually tap that one in. All right, and if I look at the other side, beautiful. So I'm going to do the front view now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror it on the X and the Y. Try and get it roughly the same size. <laughs> no wrong way. That one. Maybe. Looks too big to me. Yeah, come out one. Is that too big? Oh, sorry, this is one of the problems. I go the wrong way, aren't I? Oh. Um. That's about right. Okay, so uh, control Z, three. And I'll just create a couple if I can. In fact, I might just put one in there. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so that's our bolts done. What I'll also do is create some lines across the top. So if we go back to something like that one, annoyingly you can't save those fall offs by the way, which is one of my bugbears. So I'm going to make this uh, just on the Y axis, and then just zoom in a bit and remove the space. Oh well, you need a little bit of spacing in these things. Let's try 10%, and then I'll just make that a touch smaller. Bearish. That's the wrong way. I want it to go inwards, so I'll just crack it down. Click it, hold. There you go, and we'll do the same on this side. Hopefully, we will. It's too high. This is the one problem I think it'd be easier if I could just find a way to that there is a way I think of keeping this proportional size the same. I'll have a little play around with that. I'm going with that. I'm going with it. It doesn't look perfect. The other thing I'll do, and I will do this actually on the X. No, I won't. I'll just keep it as it is. Um I will select these find a rough point where it's exactly these corner bits are facing me, and I'll do the same thing. Just hold and I'm not going to use the uh uh, alt key now, I'm just going to do that maybe a little shorter maybe a bit bigger something like that yeah that's fine, let's just do those a few times hmm, <laughs> start again shall we Something like there to there seems about right to me. Yeah. So it's not it's not a science. This oh there we go because we've done x uh, well I guess x axis only one of the axes is uh, that's done it in all four corners. Lovely. I guess the other thing actually if I just spin back here uh, is it's got this insert at the top. Very optional, but let's just do it for fun. Um, yeah, that's the right way. And then we'll just make that smaller. 
I'm gonna, what I'll do is I'll try and do it at the intersection between that point and that point there. The alt. There. And then, ah, oh, there we go. So now I can do on the x axis, hopefully, there, all the way down to there, and it'll be kind with it, reasonably. Let's just do it over, over the other side. See how it gets on. There, I'm going with that. It's a little on the thick side, isn't it? Oh well, not to worry for now. One thing I could do as well, by the way, is current colour these in. So let's just do that as well. If we need to do that, we need to go back to the top and click on material base colour. And we're going to pick an orange, I think I went for. Put a nice bright orange. And then start with one. Now we do need to, we can't have symmetry on this due to the nature of the way these edges come out. These I haven't worked out quite how to do it. So I have to do them one by one. So let's make that a bit bigger. Start about there, to there, that's good, and then control one, do the same thing, there, to there again, you might have to do this a few times just to get it, that's too much, there, to there, how's that one looking at the front, yes yeah, okay, and then three, do that from about there-ish, to there-ish, whatever, this is very, very, um, Ah, I didn't do one of the lines look. That's great, isn't it? So let's go back to um <laughs> back to the material bump. Um what have we got right now? We've got an outwards one, we've got inwards. So let's just one, control one, three, control three. There we go, it's this one. That's too big I think. So just press F to get it roughly the right size. Yep, I go with that. And then just do it about there. Was it there? About there is right. I'm not like I say I'm not I'm not being exact here. Back to the base colour. Um humorously I did not do the sample, so let's just press S. Click it in there and it's added to the colour palette. And now I can do I hope. Control three and then press zoom in one maybe. Click Alt and then hold. That's not the right colour. Let's do that colour there. Almost there, guys. And then hold. I'm going with it. I like that quite a lot. Okay, if we um, go to the scene world, I think this is going to look really, really good in in uh, in Blend. Let's just get rid of that. Press N there. Maybe we can just have a little look with some metallic, maybe. We'll have a little play around with that. So let's get this into Blender. This is looking really good now. So let's just put Control S to save it. We've got our two textures um, that we need to work out. Now there's, there is one more problem that we need to solve, um, and that is how to get the bump map in. And I'm, I'm afraid I don't have an easy answer for you, but I have an answer which I don't love. Um, okay, so first, first of all, let's just save this as an FBX. So let's file export FBX. Now what I've done. I could save it in the Blender folder, but actually I've got a link already directly to my low poly defense assets game that I've created. Okay, so I'm going to create the FBX in there directly. All right. Um, in fact, let's just start again. File, uh, new project. All right. Let's go from the top. We'll call this um, low poly defense tutorial. I'm tempted not to call this, let's call it Tower Defence Tutorial 2020. Tower Defence 2020 Tutorial, okay. And if I click on Create Project, I um, don't really want to put that, oh, let's just leave it there. It's a 3D project, okay. Click on Create. Uh, let's just save that scene, yeah, we should do that. Okay, and if just wait a few seconds, that'll bring up a new project. I hope. <laughs> um, while it's thinking about that, well, there we go. It's doing some stuff. I'll pause it and then come back when it's ready. Okay, here we have our scene back. So let me just check. Quick, I'm recording, by the way. Sorry, I get very nervous now. There we go. Just over an hour, so I'll, I should really wrap this up. But let's try and get this finished. Um, here's our blank scene okay so this is interesting it looks like it's kept the my settings from previously I think if under normal circumstances it does something a bit more like this 
So you end up with a C in your game and your asset store. Um, I kept the C. You can drag these tabs around. So I've just kept the game and the, and the scene separately so that I can um, kind of view, see what's going on in the scene while I'm looking at the game view as well. But let's try and get our our uh, t uh, turret base in there. We'll worry about all this once we've done the turret, the first turret and the and the and the base is completed. Okay, so let's bring in the base now. So let's just do this. If we go back over to here and we'll click on Image, Save. Now, because we've never saved it before, it's going to ask us where to put it. And you see what I've done? I've put, I have put low poly defense assets, but let's go back to my Documents folder. Um, Unity, Tower Defense 2020, and everything goes under Assets. You can create subfolders if you want, but for now, so let's call this Turret Base, and I'm going to call it Diffuse, which I, you know is a bit confusing in terms of these. You heard the term uh, Base, Diffuse, uh, Albedo, different versions. Okay, but we're going to go for a Turret. We're going to call it Diffuse, uh, which basically means it's the color map. I don't know uh, if that works. We'll make it 16 bit. I don't quite know why it's gone 8 bit. I think 8 bits might be enough, but I'll have to go for 16. You can get the compression up to 100 because why not? And click Save as Image. Uh, that'll do us. Okay, and the other thing we want to do is save this as a, uh, export this actual base as well. So let's just click on File, Export, FBX. FBX is my favorite uh, one to go for. And we're going to click on just the selected objects. In fact, just to be absolutely sure, let's go to layout mode. Click on it. Yeah, you see, it was the only selected object. There is the potential to, if you're not careful, to end up bringing in, you know, pressing A here, you could bring in the camera and the lights as well. We don't want to do that. It's just that one there. So we can export from here. Whoa, what's happened there? So we do file, export, FBX. And again, so it's just the selected objects. Okay. And one of the key ones is this experimental. Experimental apply um, transform. Okay, so we're going to click on that as well. That's that's important to do that. I'll explain why later on. Unity has some weird things going on with its uh, scaling. Okay, so we'll click export FBX. I think that's all. We... Am I in the assets folder? It's going to... Tower Defense 2020. Just been over to here. Curiously, there's no assets folder. Just going to click on assets there. Bear with me. Maybe there isn't an assets folder. Um, I mean Blender. That's why. Look, sorry. So we need to go back to. Let me documents. Unity is trying to catch me out. Look. Tower Defense 2020 assets. Thank you. Turret base folder FBX. Goodness gracious. Sorry, guys. And just click export FBX. Alright, so we spin into Unity now. You'll see we've got two things now. We've got our turret base. Curiously, it looks like it has the um, material attached. And that surprises me. That surprises me in a big way. Let me spin back. I don't want that to actually happen. Let's just do that again. So let's just do file, export, FBX. Um, so select objects. We can just unselect some of these. We don't want the camera. Oh, blast it! We want the. Uh, uh, we'll unselect the camera and the lamp. Oh, I didn't think it was going to actually to uh, move the uh, image with it as well. Maybe it's because it's in the same folder. Um, I'm going to ignore that anyway because it's going to have its own to it, uh, material in a minute. I'll have to think about why that's happened. Click on export FBX. Okay, but you can see this one problem is that we don't have our all of our nice nice bumps that we've created. Now, in theory, I could create a bump. I could bring the bump map in. In fact, what should well I should, the way you should do this normally that would come in completely blank. Create material, and then we would uh, we'll call that uh, turret base material, and then we'd drag this one into the albedo, which is the same as a diffuse. And then the this 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 here, we just drag into there and click it. And now now it's got the uh, the materials that we're using. Okay, um, very curious. There you go. There's the material there. Can I delete that? I can't. Okay, I'm gonna try and work out why that is. Uh, that wasn't doing it earlier on. Right. So, but the but anyway, let's go back to the main problem, which is that we haven't got our bump map. Now I can't get bump map working. Okay, 
this is, should be the height map here I should be able to drag it in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a normal map which is a lot like a bump map but it's got a little bit more detail so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an image I'm going to create a new image not here though under under the texture paint thing I'm going to go into here I'm going to press shift A texture image texture and we'll just put that anywhere it, doesn't, it shouldn't be attached to anything and we'll just click on new and we'll call it um, turret normal how about that turret normal no alpha click OK alright so it's not attached to anything good times now if we go back to our layout I should be able to go to turret normal and over here this, um, on this side if I click on the render properties there should be a bake option but there is not because the render engine EV doesn't have one so if we click on cycles the magic bake appears here and apologies if I'm going too quick I'm just trying to get you through this you can use this another time you can check stuff out if I bring this one down here what I can now do is from the bake type I can click on normal and because I've got I think the way it's worked is because I've got the turret normal selected over here if I now click on bake hopefully anytime soon that did not work baking map save to internal image save it externally that doesn't look good okay bear with me okay so at some horrible point um, it looks as though that actually resets so I'm gonna save it now um, I'm gonna save it in the same place uh, just to be absolutely sure um, but I think that I must, at some point I must have refreshed it. What you can do is you can say reload, and maybe I did something like that, and it went grey. So um, luckily, Control Z has been my friend. So let's quickly go back and add that orange bit um, to here. I think then that's all we need to do. Um, back to here, back to base color. Now the orange is gone, so I'm going to have to sample it again. There, one, Control one. Uh, three control three there is this one I think it looks like we're gonna have to get rid of uh, that one there press F to make it larger smaller am I in line mode no I'm in some crazy mode there clicking on that I want to remove space and move to line sorry about this click it drag it too small That'll do. Um, no, it won't. I will get it right. Okay, that'll do. Right. Um, so now we can uh, just save that, and then um, back to the layout mode, and I will click on. We should be able to. Um, yeah, see, I've lost my, my, my normal, I think, if I go back to texture paint. So let's do that again. Shift A, texture, image texture. Click on here. Uh, turret normal. Click OK. Right, crikey, that's nervy times. Um, and then back to layout. And then we need to go to cycles engine. In this render setting here, yeah. And then the bake appears. Click on bake type normal click on bake uh, hang on make sure we've got our turret normal selected and then click on bake gosh what happened there that's better I don't know what's quite what's going on over here um, what we may want to do is just cheekily go back to our texture paint here I'm just going to leave them. Let's just leave them alone. Let's just get cracking on. So that's nice. That looks good. That looks like a normal map should look. So we will image, save image. And we'll save that in Unity Tower Defense 2020. That's the place. And it should be called Turret Base Normal, shouldn't it? Not Turret Normal. Turret Base Normal. Make it 16 bit. Compression 100%. Save as image. Okay. See how cycles is a little bit different to the way it renders things. Look almost looks like the uh, image is moving so let's go back to the render quickly change that back to EV so if you want to where bake is it's because this render engine at the minute doesn't have um, EV doesn't have uh, the bake option so if we go back to unity now 
here we go we've got our turret base and if I go to my material and just drag no sorry that's my material and then just drag turret base into the normal map ta-da curiously that looks like that's gone, in, that's gone out rather than in but let's just fix now oh well that looks like maybe that looks like it's gone in maybe I'm getting confused now it doesn't look great um, I think what we can do is we can adjust a couple of these ones I think well, the way I worked it was if I somewhere so you can play around with these settings you can make it look lovely and metallic like that like a right shiny old thing so you can play around with the metallic and the, and the smoothness I think metallic needs to be that and I think zero and this one needs to be adjusted smoothness to one that looks oh that's very shiny now though isn't it maybe it's the other way around maybe smoothness and then something that you like the look of yeah and that is our turret in unity now I should quickly just to have a look at it let's just do sh um, create 3d object we'll create a plane curiously that's underneath it <laughs> um, Okay, where are you then? Let's just set you zero, zero, zero. And you, matey, come up a bit. There we go. Let's get you uh, some sort of angle so you're not quite. Whatever, right? <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's our plane. Look at it. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you for watching this one. Uh, next up we'll be doing a turret and then once that turret's completed we will um, start doing some logic in unity to get it to point at the enemies and what have you so thank you so much for watching uh, appreciate this. there's been a lot here i look forward to seeing you next time thank you now goodbye